Hello, Brian. Thank you for speaking to me today. Can you please tell us about your background as a physician and a little bit about your current role? Um, I'm a pediatric gastroenterologist at Baylor College of Medicine in Houston. I'm uh, predominantly a clinical gastroenterologist, but I do spend a lot of time and energy uh, thinking about the emerging role of uh, digital media in healthcare. And so what inspired you to start up your blog, 33charts.com? Well, I initially got into blogging back in 2006 when I wrote a book called uh, Colic Solved. And at the time, um, there was no social media and every author had to have a blog, it was said. And so I started uh, a blog called, this blog called Parenting Solved. Um, in 2008 and 2009, I started to uh, play around with Twitter and Facebook and saw lots of doctors um, beginning to use these uh, social tools, and I saw lots of issues beginning to emerge uh, surrounding their use. Um, and so I launched the blog 33 Charts as a means of discussing some of the issues that doctors face at the intersection of medicine and social media. You're considered as one of healthcare's influential voices on social technology. So in your opinion, how has social media revolutionized the industry? Um, well, I think it brings doctors into the conversation for the majority of uh, modern civilization physicians have sort of been dependent upon uh, those who own the uh, radio towers and the printing presses, but now we're seeing every physician as a publisher. Um, and everything we understand about the way doctors think and what doctors do is being completely uh, refashioned because we're seeing how doctors think and how they're motivated. So uh, the idea that every doctor is a, uh, a publisher is it has, has, has changed the way uh, we see doctors in healthcare. In what ways has social media influenced doctors and patients? Uh, well, I think it's provided uh, a medium for conversation for sure. Um, you know, a lot of these dialogues and a lot of the sharing of health information at one point only happened uh, during an 11 minute encounter uh, in an exam room, but now this conversation is happening 24 hours a day. Uh, on the patient side, um, patients are empowered and they are now connected with one another and they're no longer entirely dependent upon uh, physicians for, for information and support. They have each other. Uh, and that emerging role of the empowered patient is a huge element in, uh, in digital health. As a self-called tweetiatrician on Twitter, how do you use the social media channel to get your message across and why do you think you're so popular? Um, I guess... I uh, discuss predominantly um, the medium of social media and, and, and what doctors are doing. Um, and so I center all my conversation, well, all my content is centered uh, on my blog. I create all my content on my blog, 33 Charts, and I use um, a small variety of social channels to uh, engage and create conversation and pull people back to that content that I create. Um, I think I'm probably successful because uh, um, I cover an area that, that very few people cover uh, in medicine. Uh, a lot of doctors are talking to patients, but not many people are talking about um, how doctors are using these technologies and these tools, and that's kind of how I see myself. How do you think pharma could better engage with physicians? Uh, the, you know, the challenge of... Uh, Pharma connecting with patients has been uh, a timeless question uh, since social media emerged. Um, and what's so tricky about all this is the idea that uh, physicians haven't completely penetrated uh, these social channels. Um, we're just starting to see a real emergence of uh, social media use in, in, in public spaces like Twitter and Facebook. Uh, at least in the United States and Western Europe, there, there has not been a totally successful physician vertical um, in which uh, pharma can engage. So there really isn't a great space uh, for pharma to have that engagement. Um, I do think that that is coming, and, and um, the challenge, I think, for pharma is will be going forward uh, integrating with the physician's workflow. Uh, one of the biggest challenges we face as physicians is the issue of information overload. Um, there are so many inputs and so many people who want to talk to us that um, it's a real challenge. Uh, so 
uh, integration with workflow and um, offering information that's contextual based upon a doctor's work is probably going to be where the future lies. October was our Personalized Medicine Focus Month on Pharma Forum. In what ways do you think the rise in individualized healthcare will affect physicians? Um, well, uh, individualized medicine is just one piece of um, technology that is uh, redefining the physician. I think that uh, there are a number of forces that are completely shaping what we do as physicians. Uh, technology is one of those forces. Uh, the Health 2.0 movement and social media is another one. Information inputs are another one. And so individualized medicine fits within um, um, you know, how technology is, is changing everything we do. Um, so um, I think it's going to completely change our workflows. Um, everything we understood in the 20th century about what doctors do and how they work is going to be uprooted, and individual, uh, individualized medicine is, is, is a piece of that. So how do you see pharma and social media evolving in the future? Um, well, with regard to the evolution of uh, social media and pharma, that's a tricky question, uh, certainly in the United States because of, of regulation. I think a lot of, uh, um, a lot of uh, industry is very cautious due to uh, the concerns uh, uh, with regulation from the government. So uh, we, we can see some um, industry players uh, taking some chances and, and trying and experimenting with different things. and and um, there have been some successes, but um, I think we're going to need to see a loosening uh, of restrictions from regulatory bodies before we uh, really see the true effect of social media uh, from pharma. Thank you for sharing your thoughts, Brian. Thank you very much, Anna.